Hi guys, I'm out again for a wander in the woods and I'm also doing a bit of foraging, a bit of wild camping. I think it's called Sweet Sicily. It's like, um, like an aniseed, like a licorice aniseed taste. We've got some blackberries. Middle of September now and that nice and sweet. As you can probably tell, I'm doing a bit of wild camping in the woods, but I'm uh, trying something different today. I've been inspired by Steve, Frog Moon Wild Camping Wonders. You know, I'll put a link to his channel and you can check him out because basically I would rate him as probably the most original wild camper on YouTube. And I don't know why he hasn't got millions of views because he's outstanding, honestly, he is. So, I'll put the link to his channel, but he kind of got me thinking because he's done a couple of videos with um, making a making a teepee shelter, and I thought it's autumn now, and it'll not be long before winter's here, and I want a winter camp, and um, I want to be able to put a stove inside and heat it. I've got the levo, but it's a little bit small, and I'm worried about you know getting holes in it, you know, from sparks from the from the stove. So I thought I'll build a teepee. I'd never done it before. It looked quite easy, and, and to be honest with you, it is easy. Um, but I'll not waffle, I'll just show you it, and you can decide for yourself what you think of it. You know, that's quite easy to make when you, when you think about it. You just start off with a tripod, you lash it using the tripod lashing. Well, that's six supports all together. Like I said, start off with a three, put the Put another support on, and what you do is you wrap the the cordage around, like weave it in a, in and out of the existing poles. Add another support, and then you weave, you know, weave around again, lashing that one down, and you do that until you've got your, your other three poles. So I've got a maximum of six in there. You can put more in if it's you know if it's. You're on an exposed area, but that's enough, honestly it is. And I've just used hazel, that's loads of it. And I haven't like killed any trees, I've just been side shoots which were grown, like grown off. And what I did, I used, um, I've got two of them cheap tarps from Aldi or Lills, I can't remember which now. A three by two meter and a four by three meter and I joined them together, so the six metre length is enough to wrap around. I didn't get the measurements just right, I think it's the tripod's a little bit too wider, so the, you know, it hasn't come all the way around, the, the six metres hasn't covered everything. I, I haven't really got a, you know, I can't really close that in, but I, I don't plan on having it closed in because I'm going to have a stove in there, and the stove will just, Get a bit of a pipe gun up there and it'll just escape up the top. 
there was a bit of a gap on the front here so I just got another bit of it's just old tarp wrapped it around there and guide it off and I've done all my own tent stakes did them, did them properly they do it properly you know you've got a you know, like I said, you have the six meter by three meter length of tarp, and then you're supposed to make like a half moon shape, so it's like there's nothing to fold in on the bottom. But I left it square because what I what I plan on doing that could fold out, and you can put stuff on. It's a bit of a ground sheet. That side's probably you can tell a bit better. I've got it rolled up with some logs on the inside to stop it, just to keep it weighed down, really. But you can, like I say, cut it in a semi-circle and have it kind of, you know, nice and neat round the bottom. And I'm just lying on my bivvy on that mattress. And I've had one or two remarks about the, the dirty, stuffy, you know, mattress underneath. But to be honest with you, I, there's a risk of ticks and all that carry on. When I'm in a bivvy, I've never been bit yet. And I've been doing this a, a few years. But for now, it's just a really comfortable place to lie. There's tons of room in here. I've got some wood drying out. I've got a couple extra roll mats in case I get some guests. Right, I'm just tacking bollocks now, so I'll catch you later. Just got some vegetables there. I've got some like, dried vegetables in there, like some carrots and peas and mushrooms. I've got an onion, chilli pepper, and some thin cut steaks with garlic and herbs, so I think it'll not need much seasoning that like. And for me quick meal, just some equipped with a mash. The old chops there, and an onion gravy. I'm just gonna cook on that little stove. And then later, have a bit of a fire going and I'll have some proper stew, a proper decent meal. Thing is, I don't really need a fire to keep warm, it's just a fire for cooking on later, that's all I need. It's not even going to get that cold. I'm not going to drop too much in because I want some for later for me stew. My chops have already got a bit of a gravy with a few vegetables in there so it doesn't need much. Same vegetables, rehydrating in a matter of about five minutes. They're nearly fully rehydrated. In fact, what I'll do, I'll heat this up. I should have had this in actually. It's all about timing. We'll get a cup of, cup of boiling water. A few pe oh, how are we gonna get the peas in as well? That's not what I wanted. It's all trial and error this leg. So I'm going to have a coffee with a couple of peas floating in it. Shouldn't kill us. You know, if you're really careful, if you get your timing right, you can use one pot for everything. Looks like I've got a half coffee, half cup of soup here, like one or two peas in there. It's still hard, right? Eh? Well, it's bubbling away, that's not going to eat the heat anymore once the um, vegetables are rehydrated. The um, chops have more or less warmed through. And so I'm going to just hide the mash in there, so it's going to be a kind of a mishmash or a mismash of vegetables and mash mixed together. And you know what I mean? That rubbish. Get it out. 
slap in there. Where am I gonna boys will eat Catch us later. This is the bit everybody loves. Doing the dishes. Luckily I've got a stream down there. I'm not going to get it spotless, but I'll get the thick of it off. I'll then take some water up, river water, and warm it up. Put a bit of washing up liquid in and that'll clean it. So yeah, the water's there. Uh, quite coloured like. Jobs are good. And I put some steps in there, it just makes it a little bit easier if I get up and down. And I've got a bit of cordage there just at the top because I haven't got the steps going all the way up. Because when it's raining this, it's treacherous, you just kind of get up and down. In fact, it's slippery the way it is. One thing I hate about these wax burners, they give off a lot of soot and it blackens your pan, so they're not ideal like. And plus you can it can leave a nasty taste, like a, a taste of paraffin in your in your food. Try the flint and steel. Got some birch bark, and I've got some yeah, pine resin. I can slap that on. There we go. A bit of ember going there. I love lighting fires the old-fashioned way. I make a bit of a bird's nest, it's like paper thin man, it up no problem, you just have to add a few little bits in there in the middle. You never feel that stuff. Pain resin on there. Chop the potatoes up, that chilli pepper, some garlic. I've got the dry vegetables, which is like peas, carrots, mushrooms, and I've got the onion to chop up. I'm going to chop the meat up, and I'm going to get that on the fire, get that sort of browned up. This meat's lovely. Like I said before, it's not gonna, it's not like stewing steak. It's just like a quick fry steak, and it just needs. Brown off. I'm gonna take that back to cook either. You can smell the herbs like. Beautiful. Nice big chunks. It's all gonna have to get eaten the night like. I'll probably not be able to, but I'm gonna have to give it a go. I've chopped the whole chili pepper in there and I think it's gonna be too spicy, too hot. So we'll get that on the fire. Because it's damp, it'll rustle in five minutes. Aye, ah, lovely knife that, Chris. Still holding an edge, like. I've only had to strop it basically, and uh, maybe it's just a very fine, 
fine grade wet and dry just to bring it back the razor sharp beautiful knife that you see that it's browning off quite nicely sizzling away there have you chopped the onion up yet? that's the next thing I should get on no fancy just get it chopped up Feels like I'm in a race here, like. Oh, I need to I need to sort out a grill, some kind of platform, you know, that's not going to be wobbling all over, because. If I'm not careful, the whole thing's gonna tip away, I'm gonna lose everything. So, we'll get the potatoes in. Fought them much there, you know. And that was a good idea, Gam, for the... I think that's a two litre billy can, and it's a good size, like, for two. But I've put far too much potatoes in. bubble away for good now so long maybe it's an hour or so in fact once the potatoes are soft that'll be ready like because that meat's not going to take very long like I said it's not stewing steak it's a quick frying steak now it's a long wait just starting to bubble up there I suppose I should relax now because I suppose that's a hard work done. I said I'll just slap them in the pot there and it's just a case of just waiting. I can just chill out. I just wish I had a second pot so I could make a coffee. I just love being out in the woods. I'm just out of the moon being out here like. Get up and do a bit of wild camping, you know, it makes sense. And I've just had a taste of that there and it's absolutely red hot with the chilies, I put a full chilli in there like and that was also, that must have been chilli on the on the steak but I'm just reducing that slicking it up quite nicely you can see there the chilies very hot like In fact, I should only put half a chilli in. In fact, in fact, I shouldn't have put any chilies in. It's done that, like. Lips are tingling. <laughs> oh, nah. See the chilies. It's 10 to 9 now, like, and it's pitch black. It's not cold, though. Still the middle of September, but I'm gonna let that cool down and I'm gonna tuck into it. And this is just where it's at for me. Like, see how it keeps you, you know, I mentioned before, I keep hearing like little knocks, not knocks, but things falling. Sounds like things rustling through the bushes now, but it's just the leaves falling. Yeah, autumn is here. You can see me stove there. I've got some logs to put in it, but I haven't got much wood, as you can see. It's been mainly just for cooking. I think what I should do, actually, while that bad boy's cooling down, stew ours tastes nicer when it's, a bit, when it's cooled down, doesn't it? When it's reheated. What I think I'll do is I may just transfer some of that fire into the stove and just put her in there. Or near the door, I should say, because I'm not too sure if the sparks, this chimney's not tall enough. And I didn't want to dare burning a hole in my sleeping bag, in my, my new sleeping bag in my bivvy there. I've got a few small logs to put in.
it's not actually granular, it just seems to be hanging around up the top there. A couple of spiders dangling down there. They're everywhere this time of year. I've got a chance to be me bivy and out of my sleeping bag. But this is my home for the night. And like I said, I didn't need this in here to be honest with you, it's just a test. I think I'm gonna have to have a, a longer chimney. And all that's all they're made from is tins of beans, any sort of they're all about the same size of uh, uh, tin cans. I'll just have to keep getting them and make a chimney that goes all the way at the top. I can see it's smoky like. I think what I'm gonna have to do is is just have it near the door. Well it was a test, that's all it was, and I think I'll move it further further out. More tea vicar. Right, I'm gonna eat me bait. This is where it's at. Oh that's meat. My lips is getting used to the boring sensation now. It's just like a a burning sensation in my stomach now. But it's warming, it's lovely. Stove's ticking over quite nicely there. There's a bit of a breeze now, like so it's there's a bit of a draw going. And it's uh, really on the go there. Now I'll just have a look. Just scan up the side there now. Home from home. Loads of room in there, so uh, is there anybody want to join us for a wild camp? More than welcome. As long as I know you. <laughs> I get asked by a lot of people, you know, uh, you know, would like to come camp with us and that, but to be honest with you, I'm a little bit, you know, dubious unless I, you kind of know somebody, and you do kind of get to know people through that. The YouTube videos, and you sort of like you, you feel like you know them in a way. You know you got similar interests, but you know you go camp with somebody that you haven't actually met at all. You know they could be an arse bandit or something like that. You know they may just attack you in the night, drug you. You know, and then you, next thing you know you wake up in the morning with a sore arse and a fiver stuck in your back pocket, and like you know you're not going to tell anybody, are you? You know it's like you're not going to say you got raped. In the night by, he you know, oh, that. He just wouldn't admit of it. In fact, some people might like it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> John, Northeast Bushcrafter, that's on par with your spaghetti bolognese art, if not better. This is where it's at. And that's the best tell you can ever watch, guys. Totally love it. And you get a bit of warmth off it as well. That's me fed. I just need water. Nice coffee. Then I'm just going to chill out. The night is still young because, you know, it's not even 10 o'clock yet. But I'm just going to... I'm not going to retire to me bivy. It's, I'm just going to sit here till midnight or so. And it's not cold. It's anything, you know, it's still September, man. It's, it's still quite mild. And I'm just going to listen to the, the sounds of the animals. You know, I heard a fox bark before and the owl will be out soon and it's just a lovely place to be. In the woods, you know, it's not a, it's not a place, you know, you want to feel frightened. It's, once you've got your basic knowledge of, you know, building a shelter, you know, staying warm, feeding yourself, it's, once you get over that bit, it's so rewarding just be able to come out here, you know, not going to a campsite and pay site fees. <laughs> oh, dear me. Nah, I just love coming in the woods and just, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to be buried when I, when I die, you know. I just want to be kind of like, I don't want to get, uh, I'm going to get morbid here, I know. I don't want to be in a graveyard. I just want to be, I want to be, I don't know, scattered 
amongst the, the trees and you know help the wild garlic grow in the blue bells you know and get recycled like I like, I've recycled all my life so it's a sooner or later I'm gonna get recycled one way or another right I've done enough waffling so this time I'm definitely aware unless something interesting happens then I'll see you all tomorrow I oh, know I'm full of rubbish <laughs> morning well lovely sleep last night you know it wasn't cold it was really quite pleasant you know first time I've camped out in a teepee the only problem was you know I'm a bit of a bottom dweller ground dweller you know and it's never really bothered us in the past but last night the slugs were everywhere and like I was lying there my bivy and it must have just started crawling in because I just moved my hands slightly I felt somewhat sticky and wet and cold and I thought oh yuck so I had to like pick it up and throw it up you know I had to cope with a lot of things but last night I even what I did I even hung my, my clothes up you know because I, I anticipated having because I seen one or two slugs before I went to bed so I hung my, my clothing up thinking oh well I'll, I'll, I'll settle them and I'll be able to get up on me onto my uh, gear you know so well, I'll show you See them on the slug trails? They must have crawling up the air, uh, them supports. I think in another month or so, you know, when we start getting the frosts, the slugs will just sort of like go into hiding or whatever, wherever they, I don't even know where they live, under, under lugs and stuff like that. But, you know, and the, I mean, all the insects will die off, I'll be out. Nothing going to crawl into my bivvy, you know, once we get the frost and that, so that's something to look forward to. Just spotted that there. Here's a lot. Another one there. I want a good resource there, the hazel tree is. When you look around, the leaves are starting to change colour. You know, summer's losing its grip. We're heading into early autumn. I mean, when I was sleeping last night, you could hear them, the leaves dropping. It felt like someone was creeping around. You know, when you're on your own, sometimes you have mind plays tricks. So I'm gonna get packed away. Not that as much to pack away, like, because my camp's already set up. That's, an, that's a, one of the nicest things about having a, a camp already set up. You don't have to bring much into the woods. You just, you just arrive here with your, Sleeping bag or your bivy or whatever, your food, your water, your camps here. It's like going on holiday. <laughs> I'm just uh, tired for me bum again, aren't I? Right, I'm gonna get packed away, and I'll um, hopefully I'll get out for another wild camping adventure soon. <laughs>